DIY gift kits, lip balm tutorial, along with a little bit of a 3D nail art on the tin by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you this cute little lip balm kit and the reason I'm showing it to you is because it is like a, like my version of a gift idea. I recently got this and I opened it up and I was like, oh my goodness, 14 year old me would have been so happy to get this. And uh, Terrell was standing right next to me and he looks at me like, you're happy, you're really happy to get this right now. What are you talking about 14 year old you? Anyways, it is so cool. There are so many little, there's beeswax in there and coconut butter and shea butter and all kinds of different things. You can make them shimmery. There's, I think, either six or eight, I think six, six different essential oils to flavor them. And essential oils are wonderful. I love essential oils. And there's little tins and there's jars and there's tubes. It was like, it was like Christmas morning in one little box. So I'm going to be showing you everything that's in there as well as showing you how to make them just because it's awesome and you can decorate these tins. The little metal tins are definitely decoratable. I'm going with that's the word, decoratable with acrylic and I'll show you how I decorated one of those too. So yeah, this is just, it's, it's fun. It's just, I don't know. I'm, it's one of those things that is just kind of a cool afternoon project that just makes me smile. So I thought I'd just show this to you guys quick as a gift idea in case you need something else for somebody who's crafty and likes lip products. I hope you guys like it and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So here is the kit. So it's a lip balm making kit and I will fight with the box and eventually get it open. And so it comes with everything you need pretty much. It comes with the instructions. It comes with some example recipes. That being said, you can kind of read them all and get a gist of what they do and then switch it up some and kind of formulate it yourself. So it comes with three different recipes. It's got that nature's kiss. And then the one I did is that um, Hello Rose Lip Shimmer. That's what I'm gonna be showing you. I pretty much followed it to the letter, just, you know, I've never really done this to this extent before, so I thought I'd follow it pretty closely. It has some little botanicals in it, some um, vitamin E capsules, mica powder of three different colors of mica powder, and then six different kinds of essential oils. And they're pretty small tubes, but if you pretty much are only gonna be using them for this and you keep them in this, they don't last very long. So I thought the size was actually appropriate because it's not so wasteful. And then it's got the coconut butter, which, um, you know, it's just all these really nice ingredients. So I just took the little sealed fear protection thing off of it, as well as some shea butter. And so all the recipes can use these ingredients. There is some, like, you can do this instead if you'd like to with uh, olive oil or grapeseed oil. And then it has some little stickers to put on your, either your little jars or your tubes after you're done. If you do want to just label them with the labels that come with it. And so then it also comes with all of these tubes to make your lip balm. These little tubs the little jars i guess and then some tins there's round tins there's two round tins and two of the rectangular tins personally i prefer rectangular tins because i'll show you what i mean in just a second it, when you open them up or maybe i didn't yeah no i did then you can slide your finger in it and it doesn't get under your nail which is such a great thing because that's my issue with having things that you have to apply with either like your fingertip or a brush or something if you're going to use your finger it gets under your nails horribly so now to make the rosy recipe i'm going to begin by just putting in some of that be with beeswax and like i said i am measuring everything making sure i've got everything measured correctly and i'm measuring the beeswax the coconut butter and the shea butter into a little glass bowl so i've got my measuring spoon and i'm trying to uh, getting the harder oils the coconut butter and the shea butter into this measuring cup with that stick that it comes with it was quite the task but you could definitely use like a butter knife or something instead that would work out pretty well but once you got in there you can just scrape it off into the bowl and then for this one it's i think it was a table half a tablespoon of beeswax and coconut butter and then a tablespoon of the shea butter so i'm gonna measure the shea butter out twice to make sure that it's the right amount so there's the first time and then i figured out that i could just take my measuring spoon and kind of scoop some of the shea butter out with that worked a lot better a lot quicker and then just flatten it out and smooth it out with my stick you know it's a, it's a learning curve anyways once you have all of your oils into that cup i like to kind of pre-measure things out i do this when i'm cooking too i'll measure my dry ingredients my wet ingredients and then just like baking then put everything together as i go so in a separate bowl, you're going to measure out your botanicals, and I don't remember what the exact measurements are for everything. I think maybe it's like a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half, I don't know. But put the botanicals in there. I didn't think I had quite enough. I feel like they didn't quite measure smoothly, so I had a couple. Then in a separate bowl, there are five, it calls for five vitamin E capsules. Please don't do what I did and be a ding-dong and not 
puncture them and squeeze the oil out at this stage. I put the mica powder in, measured that in first. This all goes in the mix at the same time. And then I had to deal with mica powdered covered vitamin E capsules to try to squeeze them. So that was a mess. Don't do that. Just squeeze them right now. I thought, well, I'll do that later while I'm waiting for my stuff to melt or don't measure everything together. You know, either, either way. Anyways, then you're also going to be adding in, I believe it was 20 drops of the, I want to say gardenia oil. No, I don't remember. I, the oil that smells rosy. It's now in a pot that's got about an inch of water in it. I have, I placed in my glass bowl and I have this on a, a low heat. That being said, one inch of water, once it starts boiling, regardless of how low your heat is, it's going to really shake your bowl up some. So, you know, you just kind of let it be. So then as it starts heating up, you're going to just want to stir your oil so that they don't get burnt on the bottom or anything. Just kind of keep them, keep them moving in there. The beeswax will melt the last. Everything else is going to melt a little bit quicker than that. So it does take a couple seconds longer for the beeswax to melt than it will be for the two butters. But just keep stirring it in there. If you find that your hand is getting steamed and it's getting burnt or something please do something to protect yourself don't i didn't think it was that bad i've got a pretty high tolerance to heat though so it wasn't that so as you can see the beeswax is the only thing that's left i know it's kind of a weird angle but once that is gone then you're gonna want to put all those little botanicals in there which smells very very much like rose tea to me which i think it might be doesn't really say and i'm going to simmer those for five minutes after those five minutes are up i'm going to scoop out my botanicals and put them back in their little bowl just because they are no longer needed anymore and kind of just get them out of the way some of them didn't really want to scoop very well so i just got them out of the bowl into the water didn't really matter the bowl the pot's getting washed anyway so if there's a couple of little bits of rose in there eh, it's okay so i'm getting all those botanicals out and it's a little bit of a tricky process because they are a little bit evasive with the spoon you could also use a strainer or something but i didn't want to have and it that would really cool off my oil and I wanted to try to keep it as warm as possible. So now at this point, while I was waiting those five minutes, I did squeeze my um, little vitamin E capsules. So then you're gonna wanna pour all of your, the essential oils, the mica powder and the vitamin E into the, into your oil and stir that up till it's really good. Then to prep your little tubes, I, this recipe said it made up to four tubes plus a tin so i decided just do four just in case so i'm going to be uncapping them and i rubber banded them together so that they wouldn't move around on me that was actually a great idea that was in that was a suggestion in the kit and then i'm going to open up my tin and now i will be pouring everything in there so pouring first i poured it into the tin which now after i did i was like oh that's probably pretty stupid pour it into your tubes first and for me i found that it really was actually three of the little tubes and one tin that being said i did spill some because that's just kind of how i do things so if you don't spill you might get four otherwise i got barely three but i spilled quite a bit so i'm going to just be putting on on the tubes i just the stickers that came with it you can write on that they were made by katie or your name if you're making them don't write katie on there unless your name is katie because that won't make sense otherwise <laughs> otherwise write your name on them if you'd like i just decided I don't know. I skipped that step and put them on there. I did find that the stickers didn't stick super well, but it probably would help if you washed your tubes off first before trying to apply them or even just like with an alcohol swab or some alcohol and a lint-free wipe or something, just kind of clean them off. On the tin, I'm going to begin sculpting out my little rose. It's a very, a very simple rose. I didn't want it to be too, too crazy and I want it to be sparkly because the little mica powder in the lip balm has kind of a sparkle to it. So I used a, like a, berry color and then a really pretty berry glitter so i'll show you the two acrylics and i'll show you how i dipped the bead in just a moment i did i did show that but uh one thing i do want to mention is that you really have to be very cautious with your um food safety acrylic procedures in this part of it <laughs> it's not really food but you get what i'm saying because you want to make sure that you're not going to end up with any sort of acrylic in your lip balm that would be bad. So here's the two colors of acrylic I used. And I'll show you how I grabbed a bead. So first in the burgundy, then just kind of tap it into the glitter one. So just get a little bit of glitter on the edge there. So I just wanted to show that quick and then start forming out your petals. But what you want to do is since there are two tins that come with this, sculpt this on the tin. If you make your lip balm first, sculpt this on the other tin lid so that your lip balm is covered. It's safe. It's not going to get dusty. It's kind of away in its own little zone while you work on the other one. They're interchangeable, so it doesn't really matter if which one, you know, which one you use. So sculpt on the other one. After you are done with this process and you are all done painting on it, all done sculpting on it, wait an hour. After your hour is up, wash this very thoroughly. Now, the paint that I used is multi-surface paint. And I'll, um, I wrote 
coming up roses on it because I thought that was kind of cute and funny and I thought that was appropriate. So I used multi-surface paint to do that. This paint is dishwasher safe. So if you really wanted to, you could um, probably dishwasher this. I don't know. I would assume that this little tin would be all right in there. Top rack would probably be fine. But um, I just hot soapy water. Just make sure that you really do wash this off and make sure that all of that monomer is off of it because, yeah, it's not so good to consume. So I just filled in the center of my rose with a little bit of that glitter color and then I just kind of pulled it into, like I said, this is a very basic, very basic flower. I didn't want it to be too 3D because I didn't want it to break. I wanted it to be durable. You know, you kind of throw these things in your purse and toss them around. So I didn't want it to be too, too, too crazy. So then to make my little, the little leaves that go around it, I used a very bright color of green acrylic and then some silver. So I wanted to kind of keep with that glitter edging on my leaves and I have this silver glitter acrylic that is one of my absolute favorite acrylics to use. Actually any of the glitter acrylics from Koopa are phenomenal. I don't know if you guys have ever used those before but I use them all the time and I get people that ask me all the time, what are those? They're stunning. Well yes they are. I agree. Any any of Koopa's glitter acrylics are just great. Although I don't know they just kind of redid their acrylic lines. I don't know what they have anymore but anyways these ones are from about a year ago and they're awesome. That being said, so just that little green with the silver silver hint in it. The great thing about doing something like silver with this, since instead of since I didn't have a pre-mixed green acrylic, green glitter acrylic that I wanted to use, is that the silver just kind of picks up the colors around it, so you can't tell it's not like there's this weird gray edge on them. Just has that that nice little glitter on there. So I did three leaves around my rose, and since it does have this glitter, I didn't want to do any sort of edge highlight on my petals or anything. I figured they kind of had that built in. So I thought they were good to go. And then, like I said, in the little space next to it, I'm going to be writing coming up roses with black multi-surface paint. When you are looking for this paint and because I've had people question, where do you buy this paint? It's right by all the acrylic craft paints. It is the bottles that are a little bit more expensive. So that's, that's a nice key to look for. If you look at the price tags, find the ones that are like uh, two bucks, three bucks. And that's probably going to be the right ones. A lot of them are going to have like a wine glass pictured on the front of it because they are, they, you can paint on glass, they're indoor, outdoor, and then read on the back to see if it has any instructions for washing them or curing it or anything like that. That's the right kind of paint because this paint, if, um, if you want to make it dishwasher safe immediately, otherwise it takes 28 days or something like that, you can put it in the oven at a low heat for about half an hour. But I did do the dishwasher. I just washed it by hand after an hour and it was fine nothing came off. It was all good. But this is the kind of paint you need to make sure you use because if you just use regular acrylic paint, it is going to scratch off very, very quickly. And it's not going to paint very well. It's not going to want to paint on the smooth tin. So anyways, after I've got all of that paint on there, I know it's really weird to be looking at this tin on the camera because the camera's very confused at what it should be showing you. That is it. So I've got the little tin that I made and then I've got three tubes. I'll probably give some of these tubes awaited from people. I'll keep one of them from, uh, one of them for myself and I'll show you, I showed you in the beginning what it looks like. It's not very pigmented, but I like that. It's just a nice, easy lip balm. So I hope you guys like it and I'll put a link to the kit in the description box below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.